Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. October 27th, 2023. Just minutes after the close on this Friday afternoon, doing the weekend update in, well, a very tumultuous week of trade. Of course, the topic of conversation are markets headed off the magnificent seven cliff. Yeah, some pretty serious damage inflicted in a number of obviously, well, the constituents of, well, mega market cap. We're going to cover that in quite some detail here. Of course, uh, yeah, Apple's got earnings next week. Push it aside right now because, as I said a moment ago, some damage is inflicted. In fact, that's exactly where I'm going to start here in this weekend's update. Let's start in what I term... The mother of all products, the SPX. And the reason I want to detail the uh, the SPX is, uh, first of all, the expected move. All right. You know, normally I save this for the uh, for kind of the end of the video, but it's it's imperative to understand the expected move. Once again, it got exceeded minimally, but it was exceeded to the downside in this week of trade. So we were expecting, when I talk about expected move, we were expecting plus or minus about a $93 move. Where are we? Mm, pretty much right there. I mean, in fact, on this Friday uh, afternoon, we even reached back. This is the, uh, the intraday chart. I moved from the daily to the intraday, and you can see we were actually skimming right here, tagged the lower edge of the expected move, rallied, came right back down to the lower edge of the expected move. Today, hit the lower edge of the expected move, rally, faded to it, sat there for a moment, reached back towards it toward the end of the trading day. So the entire week came down to the line in the sand, which is right around 41.30 in the SPX. The reason I'm telling you this is so imperative, like, look, people, week in and week out, this is what markets have been doing is riding the edges, either the upper end or lower edges of this expected move. And it's just, it's imperative. And I'll tell you why it's so imperative. You realize we just came out of a you know, fairly rough week. The expected move, it's expanded. You're now sitting closer to like a 96 or $97 expected move, which again, I'm going to cover a little bit more towards the end of this video. But I wanted to start with that because it's just not enough people are paying attention to like, Look, on Wednesday night's video, Wednesday night video, I said, orientation, know where you are right now because there's an incredibly high probability we get drawn into the lower edge of the expected move. And literally the next day, tag, we hit the lower edge of the expected move. People are shocked, right? Why be shocked? It's not outside the norm. If you look at this week and you can talk about any given trading week till you're blue in the face, right? But this entire week really came down to one thing, and that was price action, okay, that the options marketplace was, well, quite spectacular at handicapping. All right, so let's spin back for a moment out of the SPX, okay, because obviously markets are down this week. Doesn't matter on a percentage basis. You know, what you have to look at here is bigger picture. Bigger picture is the S&Ps, which were performing nicely on the year. In fact, let's actually pull up a year-to-date percentage. Okay, the S and P's are now up. Okay, about seven, seven and a half percent on a year-to-date basis. And I want to start with that because what I think is is just critical. Again, to kind of give yourself a little orientation for the overall markets, <clears throat> you look at the S and P's and they're up about seven percent. I was covering this again last week because markets obviously sold off a little bit and well, quite considerably the last two weeks. But I keep talking incessantly about like, have you looked at like, you know, for instance, IWM's the Russell, which we're going to talk about momentarily. Have you looked over at, for instance, the financials, which are getting eaten alive in the year, taking a look at the energy sector. The energy sector is now back to unchanged in the year. Okay. The only, only real performers here, okay, that are market drivers. You know, of course, somebody's always going to be able to pick out a stock. They're like, I am heavily invested Okay, in Lululemon. Okay, that's great. You got yoga pants for for twenty percent. But the bottom line, okay, when it comes to major sectors, the only thing standing between the S and P's and the abyss are the magnificent seven. And the big question, as I said, 
these things may be headed off of a cliff right now. And when I'm talking about the Magnificent Seven, yes, I'm talking about Microsoft, I'm talking about Apple, I'm talking about Amazon. We're going to look at them, well, right now. Let's actually dig into this a little bit more because I think it's imperative. Look, I am by no means a market technician. But what I will tell you, okay, is where to find opportunity. And everybody knows, okay, I told you that Google was the preeminent opportunity to the downside. Okay, that one hits it out of the ballpark. It cut, okay, its percentage gain on the year. It was up almost 60%. Now it's up about 37%. It almost cut it in half, okay, in what? Oh, one trading week. Look at this. In terms of expected moves, tried for the corner and missed, it got annihilated on this, okay? And that was your biggest damage that was inflicted to the marketplace. Now, before I go any further, like Google obviously already got, you know, they, I was kept talking about this being unscathed, unscathed. Well, Google got scathed, no question about it. Let's go over to Microsoft, because again, now we're starting to talk about unscathed, except Microsoft's quite entertaining. Microsoft off of good earnings numbers, completely reversed. It finished the week mildly higher. The reason I'm actually covering Microsoft is, eh, the opportunity might be here in Microsoft, but I got to wait a couple of days after the earnings. Like I don't like to trade stuff until about five days after earnings, kind of what I call an earnings hangover to some degree. And I think that uh, Microsoft could have great opportunity and I'm not going to sugarcoat, it's going to be to the downside. But the uh, again, the biggest point that we can make on this is jump over to the NASDAQ. <clears throat> and the NASDAQ, if you go into auto expected moves, the NASDAQ got hammered this week and actually broke to the lower edge of its expected move. And yet Microsoft actually had decent performance. And that is worrisome because at that point, you got to recognize it really only takes one or two of these magnificent seven to push you right off that cliff in the marketplace. Because uh, again, when it comes down to it, you know, Microsoft, you know, this one will actually shock a lot of people. We start looking at Microsoft. Microsoft's worth about uh, 2.45 trillion. Apple is worth about 2.6 trillion in the neck and neck right now. And Apple has earnings this next week. So which, well, brings us to Apple. Let's actually bring up Apple in terms of auto expected moves. Apple takes pretty good size hit this week, catches the edge of the expected move. Obviously earnings next week. Now, when we talk about, you know, scathed and unscathed, Apple has taken some degree of a hit. There's no question about it. It's not nearly, nearly the opportunity that was Google. It's not nearly the opportunity that could be Microsoft. So Apple, okay, already seeing some sell side activity. In fact, Apple was actually up at one point, again, almost 60%. Now it's up about 34%. So uh, it's, it's much more in line with uh, Google at this point in time. Let's cruise over to, of course, to Amazon. So here, once again, we're going to make a, a little bit of an argument of Danger, danger, I tell you. So Amazon was one of the other opportunities, and I talked about this a few weeks ago. It's already actually come off quite considerably. Amazon up by almost 7% today. And the reason that I really have cause for concern right now is, uh, you know, the tech troubles sustained. Look, Amazon's up 7%, and it couldn't save the marketplace. You know, you can make every argument that you want. Well, the NASDAQ was up 75 points. It doesn't make a difference. You realize the Nasdaq's up 75 points, okay? Microsoft's off, okay? What? Microsoft's not off. It's actually up on the trading session. Apple, up on the trading session. Amazon, up by almost 7%. Google, unchanged. Meta, up, okay? It didn't save the marketplace. There's not too many days that you come in here and you say, wait a second, that's an interesting point because the Magnificent Seven, okay, is, is up quite considerably across the board other than maybe NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is like, yeah, 0.4%, but they're up. And uh, again, it could not carry the NASDAQ at this point. And it's, again, very, very disconcerting area for the marketplace when the mega market caps, ooh, we're really starting to see a true and definitive unwind possibly in here. And Ness, I'm going to tell you right now, this is the first time in a very long time that we see this much of a threat to the marketplace. But when you've got something like Amazon up, Time out for a second. I want you to back up in your head three or four weeks ago. Three or four weeks ago, if Amazon was up 7%, okay, and Microsoft was bid and Apple was bid and Meta is up almost 3%, NASDAQ would have been up 350 handles. S&Ps would have ripped to the upside. People, you're in a completely different marketplace. 
just a completely different marketplace. You know, I left the bullets from last weekend here just for the reason to talk about like what was the last bullet I had last weekend? Risk reward capital preservation, risk reward capital preservation. Why? Because I told you that tech was getting dangerous with earnings coming and it couldn't have been okay, a more effective way to end last weekend's video okay, with that warning because right now you can kind of see why I am warning. I'm going to continue, all right? Look, we can bounce in this marketplace, but today was the bounce and it failed. It's absolutely a failed bounce. So we already covered a little bit of Google, Meta. Meta, another big opportunity in here also. Still rather unscathed. Again, rather unscathed. Earnings took it down, a little bit of a bounce, but when it comes down to it, we look up, number one, auto expected move, catches the lower edge of the expected move. Number two, on a year-to-date basis, 137%, okay? That is a little bit alarming. We come into Tesla. Tesla's already taken a little bit of a beating. Tesla tends to be a bit of its own animal. Obviously, we can see some more sell-side activity in here, but unequivocally, okay, the one that really uh, grabs my uh, my heart in here is uh, is going to be Nvidia. Nvidia because I think that this could be very much the linchpin in the entire marketplace at this point. Uh, and it's it's not so much to do with market capitalization as it has to do with uh, volatility. Uh, you're talking about just a high impact underlying, and it really is. When I say high impact, you know, uh, earnings earnings are coming out, but that, that's way out in the future, right? So you got to get, uh, you know, through October. This doesn't even come out to like, you know, uh, mid to late November, November 21st. But uh, talk about high impact, you still have 50% implied volatility here. And uh, I fear that losing the 400 level, it's an easy shot. Easy shot down to 350, even 300 inside NVIDIA. And uh, that would really kind of crack the back of the NASDAQ at that particular point, if it hasn't already cracked to some degree. So I wanted to cover in uh, in depth over here. Again, I think some of the biggest opportunities are going to be Microsoft and NVIDIA, both to which I carry positions, both to which I actually carry and effectively short positions in at this particular point in time. All right, moving on. Okay. So yeah, there's still big issues in tech. And of course, they're like, Apple will save the day. Um, I wouldn't look at it that way. I just wouldn't look at it that way because Apple could catch a bid. And yes, it could recover the marketplace to some degree. And there's no question, look, Apple earnings are big, but they don't come to like Thursday. A lot of crap is going to happen between now and Thursday. You've got the Fed coming out. You've got all kinds of economic data. You're going to end the week with the employment situation. Like, look, this is going to be, well, no eloquent way to say this. This is going to be a, a crap-filled fantasy week of uh, everything from employment situation to, oh, it's it's ugly. I mean, it is ugly and jobless claims and Bank of England and, you know, oh, yeah, we are filled, okay, with data factory orders. Obviously, the Fed, yeah, I'm going backwards on this one. You got a little bit of Fed mixed with jolts, mixed with ISM, mixed with construction spending, mixed with some uh, PMI. That's all on Wednesday. It's going to be a rough couple of days out there, people. Anyway, with uh, with that being said, as I said, Apple, of course, it's important, okay? But as I just said a moment ago, like Amazon, that did not save the day, and that's a huge bid. 7% move up, and it doesn't save the day, right? Keep it in mind, because Apple's move is not implied to be that big. So the way I'm looking at Apple coming into next week, it can't save the day, but it sure is hell. Could ruin this marketplace and that's that's the way you got to approach it from a risk reward standpoint yeah it could actually cause a you know a bid to the upside a little recovery in the marketplace but uh if apple were to miss it sends us into the abyss and there's a lot of that talk going on right now you always got to remember that uh, markets they don't uh, they don't tank from uh from highs they uh, they tank from oversold conditions all right, so uh, Russell, let's just flip to Russell quickly because this has not been on everybody's radar screen. If you uh, take a quick glance with me at Russell, people, it doesn't get uh, much worse than this. On a percentage basis, this is a, a stock that was actually a stock. This is a major index product, okay? But it's the little guys. It was up about 15%. That was only at the uh, very end of July. Uh, it is now down over 6% on the year. In fact, uh, a better way to look at this, if you look from like that high, okay, to where it presently is, let me zoom in on this, the high to where it presently is, down just shy of 20% decline. It's an 18% decline right now uh, in the most recent sell side activity. It's ugly. 
Okay, it's ugly. It has everything to do with the fact that financials are now getting absolutely hammered, which is exactly my next point. Okay, financials are getting hammered. Energy now, energy is back to flat on the year. I already stated that. My concern at this point in financials, I think that that has much broader implications. Okay, keep your head in the game right now when it comes to financials. Those bond losses, and I talked about that extensively last week, the bond losses. Look at stuff like Charles Schwab. Okay, and look, I am not making... I am not making any statements okay, about the viability of any company. Obviously, I'm using a Charles Schwab product right now, which is Thinkorswim, okay? But it, uh, it is becoming a little bit nerve-wracking to uh, to watch. Look at Schwab on a year-to-date basis. It's now down almost 40% uh, on a five-year, okay? This is, uh, it's in a heavy degree of trouble at this point in time where some of the losses are mounting. And again, we're in a heavy and high interest rate environment. Shouldn't that help? you know, underlines like this? And the answer is it's not. They're actually caught in bad bond trades. Look at actually the regional banks. The regional bank sector, this is the KRE, the regional bank sector is once again, it's approaching the lows, the recent lows that we had during that little regional bank crisis. Pay attention, okay? I'm telling you something is wrong in the financials. Do I know what it is yet? Pay attention, okay? Today, JP Morgan actually had news. Now, this could be an absolute nothing story. JP Morgan, though, got hammered. Why? Okay. Jamie Dimon actually sold some shares of stock. Look, the guy could be like, you know, I'm buying a new condo in Manhattan. Was he not making enough off of his salary out there? Okay. It's it's hard to live. You don't understand living in Manhattan. <laughs> anyway, okay. Come on. You got to poke some fun. It's Jamie Dimon. Uh, pay very careful attention at this point to the financials because I'm going to tell you something about financials. When it comes to financials, traders are the ones really running financials. And when you start to see financials, see sell side activity like this, traders know something, okay? What do they know? It doesn't matter what they know. They know the positions that they're in. There's a reason that there's sell side activity in the financials and they're down 8%. And because they're down, because KRE is down, which is regional banks, because stuff like Charles Schwab is down, pay careful attention, okay? Something is going to break. I don't even know it's going to be one of the financials. It could actually be something in the real estate, uh, real estate market that's going to break financials. Something's going to break in here. And it's getting, again, very, very edgy out there. All right, bonds. Let's cruise over to bonds. Bonds, they're in a consolidation this week. Forget about you know gains or losses. They've consolidated this week. But we're still, we're a hop, skip, and a jump. And again, I always go bonds, then I go TNX. TNX is actually the 10-year. We're a hop, skip, and a jump off that 5% number. Um, I would say keep it in mind this week because obviously it's a Fed week. We're going to have tons of economic data. The week that we just passed through was all about earnings and was all about tech earnings. This next week, we're going back to bonds. Okay, We're going all back into bonds. And that's why I say better pay very careful attention to those financials with it. The bonds could really, I mean, look, they've already crashed. But I'm just not sure we've seen capitulation in here. Uh, but even in days of consolidation, we're seeing really huge volume. Just it's rocking out there inside of the bond market. So the bonds have consolidated, but they're definitely not out of danger at this point, especially with all the economic data. One thing I will tell you about economic data and the Fed, because, of course, this next week, the Fed shall cometh. OK, and what are they going to do? Absolutely nothing. The Fed's got to be getting a little bit nervous at this point because data is strong. GDP is strong. Consumer spending is strong. I mean, you could look at a lot of the data, right? And, and the employment okay, has been relatively strong. The data does not support anything but the Fed either keeping rates consistent or even raising them. And there's like a catch 22 because I want to, you know, deeply, I want to tell you that the Fed is going to, what I call dove out a little bit. Fed's got to be looking at the stock market and going, I'm getting nervous. Of course, they're going to be getting nervous. People are not going to feel so wealthy with the uh, stock market actually tanking like it presently is. But boy, they're going to be very, very careful in what they say. People, you got to realize there's some damage now being inflicted to the marketplace, you know, and the Magnificent Seven could be headed off of a cliff. The Magnificent Seven, if they really slip, could you imagine something like NVIDIA, okay, losing a big portion of its market cap and the damage that would inflict back to the S&Ps, okay? You could easily see, you know, oh, we're right back into the, uh, you know, 3900 realm. It's not far off. So, again, keep your head in the game because one of the things that I talked about extensively 
on Wednesday night's video. Go back, review Wednesday night's video if you need to. We talked about getting into the volatility hurt locker. Boy, that couldn't have been more accurate. Remember, I was talking about that on Wednesday, and we actually right here. That was the 4211. I hit 4211, and what happened after 4211? Uh, basically, all hell is going to break loose in the marketplace, and that's precisely what we saw. Look at like volatility futures in here. Volatility futures, they flattened out. We are technically, we're not in contango. We're not in backwardation, okay? We're in nowhere land. We are going nowhere. But this marketplace at, at this point, the scary part is that volatility hasn't spiked more. And I was talking about that as well in last week. I left the bullets from last week because they're still very pertinent. Volatility is elevated, but is it high enough? And I'm, I'm bringing that back up from last week because look where we are right now. Now, is the S&P at the lowest point it's been? I want to show you this. Is the S&P at the lowest point it's been? Yes, this is the lowest point we've seen the S&P well, since all the way well back here. Forget about back there. But the interesting point to be made is that VIX actually peaked higher than this, right? Just the other day. And you're like, well, yeah, why is that? Okay, because uh, right now there's just not enough fear. There's not enough loathing in this marketplace. We're just kind of like sinking a little bit in the marketplace and like basking in the glory of the downside. We have not felt the fear. And that's one of the points I want to make. And maybe before the sell side is over here, we do need to feel the fear. Any rally at this point coming right back to 4211, I think that's actually a very shortable area for this marketplace. Remember, the Fed's going to come and that's actually going to spark some volatility. There's no question about it. But it's more the economic data before and after the Fed, that's it's just gonna get crazy out there. And again, it's really hard to make an argument, okay, for the Fed doving out. Doving out basically means they're like, well, we're a little nervous about raising rates. I think the Fed has to come strong. The data's been strong. Inflation is still with us. We saw their PCE indicator today, okay? It's good, it's strong, it's inflationary. Okay, the uh, you know the personal spending rose by 0.7 percent. Its estimate was supposed to be 0.5 percent. Strong data, not good, not good for the marketplace. Okay, not good for the economy in my opinion because they're just going to keep raising rates. All right, let's get right to it. SPX. Once again, the SPX. As I was saying when we kicked off this video, the SPX had about a 93, 94 dollar expected move. Right? Okay. Let's just cut to the chase. Where's the uh, expected move for this next week? So this expected move for the next week, this is the official expected move, is just shy of 97 bucks. So if you thought you came off of a rough week, okay, well, your rough week, look, people, we moved 100 bucks, right? We started the week literally right here at 42.24. We ended the week at 41.17. You moved just over 100 handles on the week. Well, strap in because uh, you're going to do it again. We're expecting to move uh, about 96 handles on the week. And again, I want to reiterate the point. Like, look, this kind of trade, you just pick and choose your entries very carefully, right? Always be assessing risk reward, capital preservation. This is spectacular week for traders. Spectacular if you know what you're doing. It's actually one of the best weeks I've had oh, since, you know, you got to go back to 2022 to see a week this strong uh, for me. And uh, part of that happens to be because, uh, yeah, I am uh, definitely short some deltas out there, short some some everything, right? But uh, lo and behold, okay, it's the volatility that brings opportunity with this marketplace. So answering that question, are markets headed off the magnificent seven cliff? Better believe it. And I think we've already seen degrees of damage. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.